Good day, ladies and gentlemen, and now today I'm going to be talking to you guys about the slavery of the ancient world. Now, I know this is probably going to be starting up a couple of messed up comments and stuff like that, like why and stuff like that, or this is messed up, but actually, if it wasn't, now, technically, if it wasn't the ancient slavery for that world, then technically we wouldn't have this stuff and that. But, as well, there are some cultures that had different forms of slavery that were somewhat better than the type of slavery we think about. Now, as well, I'm going to be talking about from the very beginning of the first empires to the empires we mostly know about, and then I'm going to be going into our modern day slavery, in which some people might over exaggerate about and cause and yell about problems about. Anyways, let's get right down into it. Now, the first empire that actually came up was known as the Akkadian Empire, or as well the Sumerian Empire. Now, these two empires were technically, well, the first two empires, but first came the Sumerians, then came the Akkadians, who drove them out, and in the process made slaves of the Sumerians, as it's stated in history. Now, what did these two empires end up having to do with slavery? Well, first, when it came to the Sumerians, their form of slavery was technically an adjustable type of slavery. In other words, it's a form of early freed slavery. Now, when I say freed slavery, it's a type of place where the slaves have their own rights. In other words, they're not mistreated like, well, like other people are. And as well, they kind of actually have a lot more rights than other people would have at that point in time. But now, when the Sumerians came in, though, their form of slavery was both good and bad. Because it's stated that during the year of what might have been the second king, if I remember correctly, the Sumerian king ended up, well, uh, enslaving his people even worse, and forced them to, well, create an even worse type of form of monarchy. Meaning that once the third king came in play, he kind of, well, took things a little too far and nearly destroyed the very idea of freed slavery. And in doing so, we see more of the slavery that we might see in ancient Egypt and Rome. But enough of that part. Now, let's get back into Sumerians. Now, ancient Sumerian slavery actually was adjustable. Slaves, as I stated, had their rights. They pretty much weren't technically forced to uh, build anything. Though, if they were to be known as slaves, technically they helped out around here and there. In fact, sometimes they might have been conquered people, or they might have been people who actually came into the land and actually, well, became adjustable to the type of ideal. In fact, when it came to slaves, you didn't have to pay taxes. You technically didn't have to do, well, all these things that we pretty much have to do today. You just had to follow the words of your master. For example, you didn't have to pay for food. You didn't have to pay for taxes. I say again that you didn't pay... Well, technically, no one had to pay for housing back then, though, so I can't count that one. But they did actually... If they were to be in the battlefield, a slave did actually have to go with his master. Now, if they wanted to earn riches and stuff in the battlefield, they could. And in doing so, they could actually become, well, great warriors and freed in the process. Now, slaves at this point in time were what you might call a living dynasty of the era. Meaning that slaves at this point in time worked the land, and did better than what you might think. Because at this point in time, they were better treated, more, well, treated like humans instead of a dog. And in fact, even the great Sumerian king even allowed a slave to actually become a sergeant in one of his militaries. Well, military ranking of modern day, I could put that in there, but it's hard to say of what the real, his uh, original rank would have been. But now, what about if the slaves gained their freedom early on? Well, yes, but in doing so, they thought, well, what's the point of me going somewhere else if the, I'm just going to get killed in the process? So they stayed and lived out their lives there. Other forms of slavery in the ancient empire actually took place further on out. 
Now you guys might wonder, how long did this last in ancient Samaria's time? Well, it ended very shortly, but unfortunately it didn't technically decline as many people think. Because some people might think that, oh, but in history the Sumerians were evil. Not exactly. Because when people actually think about the ancient Sumerian Empire, they kind of overthink things. For example, when you actually think about the ancient Sumerian Empire, you think of the mass and majority of land. But in truth, the mass majority of land at this point in time was pretty much between the Tigris and Euphrates River. And the Sumerians built up their empire so massive in the process because of the slaves. And in fact, the slaves ended up, uh, well, creating a greater empire in the process. In fact, it's even stated that there was even a law given by the ancient Sumerian king who ended up de devoting the land to the slaves if they became freed. For example, if I worked for, say, about an entire three years as a good slave and ended up raising the crops better than anyone else, then technically I was given my own land. This was technically the golden age of the Sumerian people, but when the other empire, as I stated before, the uh, <laughs> the Akkadians, or Akkadians, however you want to pronounce it as, as soon as they come in, technically they the kind of destroy this type of idea, but later on readopted it and became a new form of freed slavery. And at this point in time, slavery was starting to become a non-existent. Slavery was dying off. Though, if you belonged to the royal family, or even if you were a nobleman, you were technically killed or became a slave yourself. In fact, it's hard to say whether or not what happened to them. But now you guys also might want to know, okay, what about the sex slaves then? Because we know there's probably a bunch of them. Actually, at this point in time, there was hardly anything about that. In fact, freed slavery technically didn't allow sex slaves. So, pretty much, it's hard to say whether or not they would have actually, uh, well, technically have been uh, first pushed into this point in time. But now you guys also might want to know, why were freed slavery very high in this point in time? Well, it's stated that pretty much the Sumerians were a great people. But now, when it came to slaves in the military, that was a different story. Now, there were hundreds of them, yes, but unfortunately, their military didn't have that many resources and weaponry for them. So what they did is allowed them to be what you might call a raiding party. Or in other words, uh, people who attack the enemy at the night, and next thing you know, pretty much uh, build up a massive majority of men. But now, the history on the slaves in the ancient Sumerian people is gone from to and from good to bad, over and over. Now, it was only until the Sumerians were technically defeated by the Akkadians that technically the Akkadians copied off and done the same thing. But now, you guys also might want to know, wait, where is Samaria and Acadia? Well, as I said, it's between the Tigris and Euphrates River, and which somewhere in modern-day Iraq. But now, the ancient slaves even built massive temples that, to this day, have still been declared no longer found, or have been found, or destroyed by warfare. For example, we see that when ISIS tore down the... Yeah... That that part is kind of, well, already seen. We already know what's happened there. But it's also stated that the slaves at this point in time were also the ones who built the ancient biblical tower. <laughs> you guys might wonder, what am I talking about? Well, if any of you guys also read history, it's also known as the Tower of Babel. And the Tower of Babel was technically sky this was the tallest tower in history. Well, technically the tallest building in history, until God destroyed it. 
Now, it's stated the ancient Sumerians might have built it. It's also stated that the ancient, uh, well, pretty much it's hard to say who actually really built it. But if I had to, if you had to ask me, it has to be the ancient Sumerians, not the Akkadians. But now, also, what did ancient Sumeria and ancient Akkadian Empire slavery really look like? Well, if you had to, like, ask pretty much anybody from the history department and stuff like this, technically, you would think, because normally people would think, no, oh, they were mistreated. But a historian would actually tell you this is incorrect in so many ways. In fact, slaves were actually given their own little areas, and in fact, they're even giving their teachers to teach them how to read and write. Now, this is impressive. We don't see something like this happening, not until up until the 1800s, by the time of General Robert E. Lee, who actually as well did the same thing. Even Sam Houston did the same thing. Even Thomas Jefferson did the same thing with their slaves. In fact, there are even cities that were built for slaves for them to be occupied and, well, technically ruled by slaves later on. For example, if you were a slave and you became freed, you technically built your own land, and these were the slaves that worked under you. Or technically were your fellow slaves, and technically you were given the ownership of them if you wanted to, or just left, as I said. But now you guys also might want to know, how well educated were the slaves back then? Well, the slaves at this point in time were so well educated that it was impossible to state that the slavery at this point in time was bad. In fact, if you were technically going into debt and actually had the choice to become whether a slave or a criminal, what you can do is actually become a slave and re... well... own up to your debts. In other words, uh, get rid of it. But that changes after the Sumerian and the, f <laughs> and well, yeah, the other empires at the Middle Eastern Empire die. For example, as soon as the Akkadian Empire is conquered by other people, technically this form of slavery dies off. And the Sumerian and, and Akkadian Empire's form of slavery is no more. Now, though, the problem with this point in time is that as soon as the Marian Empire and the Akkadian Empire die off, it's technically stated that most of the slavery at this point in time is vanished. It's no more. It, there's nothing of it. But actually, here's another thing. Some empires as well adopted the Akkadian and the Sumerian Empire's form of slavery. And in fact, this is probably one of the most strangest things in ancient history, but it was mostly, mostly the most impressive thing in the ancient times. Slaves could even hold their own form of council, meaning that they can go to the king and actually have a form of democracy with the king. Though, this is the hard part because you're, there's only one person allowed for a slave to do this, meaning one slave out of every nobleman's helm is technically only allowed to vote. And which is both good and bad at the same time. So it's kind of a messed up democracy at this point in time. But it's an early form of democracy. But now, why did the Akkadian and Sumerians end up making this form of slavery, you guys might ask? Well, this form of slavery was technically stated to be better, more adjustable to the time. In fact, it's actually stated the ancient Sumerians and Akkadians were trying to make a slavery that was far better than the ancient ways. Though technically the Akkadian and Sumerian Empire at this point in time were technically in the early Bronze Age, very early Bronze, or very late Neolithic. And at this point in time, the what? The uh, type of ways in which history would have been like this were changing, they thought. In fact, they viewed this as their golden age, to rebuild an era of new world for all people, whether they would be slaves or free men. 
In doing so, the history of the Sumerian and the Akkadian Empire built itself up in order to become a new world. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if you have any questions, let me know down in the comments below. Please like this video for more. And also, if you guys like this, also please subscribe for more videos. And as well, I have a show soon also be covering uh, more videos on ancient slavery and ancient world. So please stay tuned. And have a good day, ladies and gentlemen.